I'm trying a new technology called Svelte, which is a front-end development framework built for web because a lot of people actually mentioned me to try this out and what do I think about Svelte Kit and Svelte and Svelte versus React and what is my reaction. Personally, I'm a React developer, so I haven't really used Svelte a lot, but I have heard about it so much that I decided that, hey, I'm going to give it a spin, see what's the hype about and express my fair opinions in this video. Let's go. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. All right, so the first thing you have to realize before we start this video is that I have worked with React for way too long. And before that, I had worked with Angular for way too long. So right now, when I was trying Swelt, obviously the biases which I have developed in React came across and I was feeling that, that I am probably judging Swelt in a way where I would not have done that if I wasn't a React developer, but I'm gonna be dividing this video into two sections, the pros and the cons of Svelte, which I found out. Let's start with this blog post, which is the introduction to Svelte. And if you take a look at this embedded snippet over here, which shows you kind of like a very basic hello world in Svelte, you can see that the logic is very, very minimal. It looks very tidy. You have certain event handlers, you can see you are binding some sort of properties and you just have expressions just like you would in, in a JavaScript or a, in a React app actually. So after exploring Svelte a little, what I did is I went to this basic interactive tutorial which have they have nothing as better as what we have developed at CodeDamp. If you have not checked out CodeDamp's interactive courses, I recommend you do check them out for learning HTML, CSS, React and probably Svelte sometime in future. But this is a very basic interactive way of learning Svelte as well, where you just could probably just write a bunch of code here and it will show you the output. And these are like nice exercises, you have to do them in order. And this actually got me started with Svelte a lot. And I was probably somewhere over here inside the bindings area when I just decided that, hey, okay, I have learned at least enough about Svelte so that I can build a basic app. And because this is my first interaction with Svelte, the biggest pro which I saw was that it was very easy as a beginner, if I am a beginner, if I don't really understand a lot of JavaScript, it was very easy to just understand what was going on on the screen, right? If you are somebody who's seeing this pretty much, you know, this code over here, which just shows you a basic, let me just go back and show you the original example, this, this code right here, it wouldn't be very hard for even a backend developer who has never really worked with HTML or JavaScript to understand like what's exactly going on over here right building a basic calculator it's it's intuitive and it's simple it looks very simple second pro of Svelte again is performance wise i am assuming that Svelte is a highly performant application framework compared to react and angular and vue so that means that it is not like really far behind so having this clean syntax over the similar performance is obviously helpful if you are building some sort of medium to large size application. And finally, just like React, you are able to keep your logic and render layer in the same file, right? Just like Angular, for example, requires you to split the view file from your logic file. In this case, you can keep your scripting in the script area, your local styles, even in the style tag, and basically anything else which goes as an HTML look, which looks like HTML, it's not exactly HTML because Svelte will parse this, is also present in a single file, which would help you to just jump from logic to render layer to style layer really quickly. Now, some things which I did find a little off as somebody who has worked with React and JavaScript frameworks for a long time, I don't really like when magic is happening, right? So when stuff like this is happening, where, for example, if you take a look here, this is nothing less of magical, right? Because if you know JavaScript, you know that this is not exactly like any way a JavaScript function or a JavaScript piece of code can operate, right? So that means you have to, if you want to really appreciate Svelte, you have to understand how it compiles as well. So what Svelte does is what I found out is that Svelte is actually a compiler. It's not exactly a library only or a framework only. It actually goes and compiles your code to HTML, to proper HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right? And the way it does that is as, as much as I have understood is that it will take a look at all the assignments happening in your script tag and would actually insert something known as invalidate over there whenever that assignment happens, right? So whether that's happening in a set in the world or anywhere, it will just call this invalidate and this invalidate somehow re-renders your changed 
values on the DOM, right? You change elements on the DOM and it does not use a virtual DOM for this. It just does it directly. So once you have come across this magic, I mean, if you don't know how this works, you can make a mistake of doing something like this and then having a set timeout of, you know, ARR.push 100, maybe just like that. And then wondering that why does ARR, for example, uh, of zero does not appear on the screen, right, at all. This is because, like I said, Svelte compiles it down and actually tells you that, hey, whenever an assignment happens, only and only then I'm going to try to re-render. So in this case, if you want the assignment to happen, then you have to do a little bit of hack like this or a better way is to actually just, you know, go ahead and do something like this, right? And of course, this does not work because I cannot use const over there. So now you can see if I do that, it just works fine. So this might catch you a bit off guard if you don't know how Svelte works under the hood and if you haven't really like read all the documentation properly. So this is why like I don't would not really prefer a lot of magic happening by the compiler because now you sacrifice the functionality and the fine tuning for what the compiler offers in terms of cleanliness of your code. My second complaint with Svelte was that after doing so many lessons over here inside of this Svelte uh, tutorial, what I felt was that I was learning more of Svelte and less of JavaScript. Now, let me elaborate that. When you work with React, that's, that's it, at least that's what I feel. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. When you work with React, you learn a little about React. Sure, there's a definitely a layer where you have to understand how hooks are working, how use effect is working, how states is working and this and that. But most of your time is actually spent into learning JavaScript as well. For example, if we take a look at this same exact code, which the documentation has also written in React, you're going to see that even in this particular example, you learn a lot about JavaScript compared to just React. Why? Because you can see that inside onChangeEvent, the function which is called, it is like a raw unmodified, not exactly unmodified because this event is a synthetic event, but still this value is a string value, right? So you have to parse it into a number. So although this might seem inconvenient to beginner, which I understand that Svelte would like really make a lot of sense, but it will be very hard for you, for example, to maybe realize when you go back to HTML that value attributes, for example, even though you have number over here, the JavaScript API, the event.target.value would always give you a number. Right. So all you have to learn in the React layer is about a little bit of logic on React and then you are back to JavaScript. So you learn a lot more about JavaScript once you complete a little layer of React understanding. In case of Svelte, it is pretty much everything Svelte, right? You learn a syntax which is custom to the runtime. You learn about this if conditional blocks. You learn about a lot of proprietary things to Svelte, which I don't necessarily have a lot of problem with. But the only problem I do see is that it is like, I mean, you're not really learning about JavaScript over here, right? If you're doing something like this, and we have done this a lot in Angular already, people who have done Angular know this. The biggest concern with Angular was also the same thing, that you inject so much of your own syntax that you pretty much are binded to that particular framework, right? You cannot do anything of that knowledge. If you're really good with Svelte, it might mean that you're not good with JavaScript. Sorry to break it to you. I do feel like Svelte is pretty much developing a smaller language of its own because it compiles down, it gets a lot of things done and it's awesome. It's great for readability and functionality even as well. But this is just not JavaScript, right? If you're mastering this part, you would have to learn about array methods and filters and loops and this and that on your own as well. Sometime, sometime down the line in JavaScript world. So all in all, I do feel like Svelte is a great framework you can start with if you want. If you have learned HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and you have heard about Svelte and you want to give it a spin, sure, go ahead and do that. My recommendation, obviously, like I said, I was biased from the start. My recommendation has not changed from React, partly because I do still do feel like if you're starting with a framework like Svelte, it gave me a little bit of Angular vibe. I'm not gonna lie. This syntax and you know the 
the way templating works in angular pretty much is just like close to like how it works over here as well but yeah i mean you're not using a lot of javascript over here so your application your render layer is javascript free your logic layer would contain a lot of javascript but again magic is happening over here and you have to be careful when magic happens because there's a difference between declarative and magic and you have to like realize when something would work or when something would not work right like the push example which i gave you actually one more thing which i tried was with eval uh, just to see if the compiler actually does the replacement here as well and turns out it does not so i mean if you're using any sort of spooky syntax as well this would not really work because the compiler would not probably get into those functions finally i did see like this blog post mentioning a lot of characters and uh, you know a few more things about how react components get noisier so to be honest i don't exactly agree with this plus the fact where the blog post also mentions like you know having a type conversion is required somewhere yeah oh, over here not only that but we have to remember how to course the string value with the plus operator so i mean i do agree with this partly but not really because this probably should not be the job of react anyway right this is a javascript functionality and this is like fabulously fixed when you use typescript right if you're using a typescript example over here the moment you write one here this a and set a actually become a number and a setter of number right so the moment you try to do this without a plus sign typescript will throw an error so these problems are not really problems if you are working on a good scale project and just hiding them with swelled i mean it's great for beginners like i say again i am in a conflict here some things i do like about this but those exact things make me not like swell so i want to know your opinion in comment section as well what do you think about this new framework what's your opinion on Swelt versus React versus any other framework. I'm happy to hear any contrasting views or any sort of experiences as well. That is all for this video. I'm gonna see you in the next one really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much much for watching.